I have to admit, real students, I'm a little bit surprised because these Alien prequels have subtext. In fact, the underlying religious themes of both Alien prequels became a little more obvious in Alien Covenant. No, I'm serious. A covenant is an agreement or a promise, and one such biblical covenant was when God agreed not to wipe the earth clean again like he did with Noah's flood. So, since a movie theater is like a church to me, Ridley Scott, God of cinema, I pray to thee, can we make a covenant? It's time to bring the Alien franchise back to its former glory. Either that or bring on the flood. Let's start with a little cinematic controversy, shall we? Other than the fact that my last review of Prometheus, I defended the movie, but let's, let's, let's get past that. We'll get back to that a little later, but what I want to address is the fact that we all know Ridley Scott can be an amazing and award-winning director, but is he not also one of the most inconsistent directors out there? For every Blade Runner, Gladiator, or The Martian, there's The Counselor or Exodus. And even though he birthed the franchise in chest-busting fashion, aren't his Alien films also inconsistent? The very first Alien was amazing. I will still, to this day, defend Prometheus. And then we come to Covenant. But the one thing you cannot take away from him is the man always has a vision. And believe it or not, haters, Prometheus was part of a vision. We just didn't know it yet. And who knew part of the subtext of the last two Alien movies is Ridley Scott is clearly a born-again Christian. I mean, Exodus could have been a warning sign. You're probably saying to yourself, well, that's it. Real school has gone off his director's chair. Aliens does not contain subtextual religious themes. It's about space travelers who fight monsters who look suspiciously like vaginas and penises. Well, think again, sexually frustrated nerds. There is a load, phrasing, of not-so-subtle subtext about how man needs to create, how man needs to find his own creator, and how man eventually turns on his creator. God creates man. Man destroys God. Uh, man no, wait, 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 not now, Goldblum. I'm trying to control an audience of horny nerds. I don't need your brand of mulleted, greasy chest sexuality right now. While I defended Prometheus the first time around, now I actually know there was subtext. Subtle subtext, surprisingly. How the Titan Prometheus actually created man, and how the crew even discussed religion. And here I was just thinking it was filler. In Covenant, the best thing about Prometheus, Michael Fassbender, returns as the much more salt of the earth and strangely accented Walter. However, the crew of the Covenant bumps into what's left of the crew of the Prometheus, and that means the much more flamboyant David also returns. But thank God he did, or Ridley Scott that he did, because with his return come two other things. One thing that's great for a film plot, and the other thing that's not so great for a film exposition, both arrive at that moment. And finally, we discover there is subtext to these two alien prequels, and more importantly, we discover what Scott was trying to address in these alien prequels. Granted, it's through exposition, but it almost had me. Before David's return, Covenant had too much development, too much build-up. It was a little too slow with not enough horror movie payoff. But more importantly, just as I found myself almost interested in this movie, there was one of the most awkward on-screen kisses ever put in a mainstream film. Turns out, real students, you're not the only ones who have trouble controlling your hormones because Michael Fassbender lands a big, fat, wet one on Michael Fassbender. It was awkward. It was comedic for all the wrong reasons. And in this moment, Ridley Scott and the writer had me asking, are you for real? But there were plenty of those moments. As I mentioned before, I did enjoy Prometheus when it first came out. And yes, I will still defend it, even after the internet has ripped it apart. I didn't mind it the first time because I didn't really notice what the internet ripped it apart for. And that was the stupid, idiotic, horror movie trope decisions that the crew of the Prometheus make. It's all about hindsight, I will admit. There are stupid decisions within that film, but when I saw it the first time, it didn't distract me enough to take away from my enjoyment of Prometheus. But since then, that's all I've heard about. So I was much more aware of these stupid decisions when I was watching Covenant. And the second time around, I can't really defend the stupid decisions again. Or my personal favorite, landing on an alien planet, jumping out of the ship with no mask or hazmat suit. Hey, don't open that! It's an alien planet! Is there air? You don't know! The crazy part is, the writer tried to be a little clever, and yes, they investigated the atmosphere. Yes, the atmosphere on this alien planet is much like Earth. However, oxygen is step one of the things you need to worry about when you breathe. 
It's like no one in the Aliens universe read, listened to, or watched a movie version of War of the Worlds, let alone studied science, because there's these crappy little things in the air called germs, and they can kill you. There are germs on Earth that can kill you, let alone an alien planet. And wouldn't you know, two members of the Covenant crew die because of things they breathe in. I mean, even people on Earth wear masks when visiting other countries. You would have thought maybe the writers would have visited other, perhaps better, scripts. Damon Lindelof, who wrote Prometheus, and John Logan, who wrote Covenant, are better than that. They're two of my personal favorites because of their work on Lost and Penny Dreadful. And those shows are two of my favorites predominantly because of the writing. It would seem that Lindelof, Logan, and Scott were trying to create this clever little allegory over the last two Alien prequels, but really, they forgot that Alien films, at the heart of them, are simple and effective monster movies with characters that we actually care about, not this distracted mess. Alien Covenant is a burn it. Poll question, what is the unintentionally funniest horror film you've ever seen? As always, leave your answers in the comments section below. But until next time, school's out. Hey, Real Students, thanks for watching. If you want to subscribe to Real School, click that round Real School logo right beside me. Also, click that damn notification bell so you're aware of all of Real School's new content. You can follow me on Twitter, and of course, if you get anything out of Real School, you can always give a little back. Just click the link in the description below or the button down there, and you can become part of my Patreon team.